Hello, thank you so much for your patience. We are here, I guess we're, we're online, we are live. Thank you everyone who is joining in or who's watching this as a rebroadcast later on. I'm gonna leave it on YouTube for, I guess, forever. So uh, I appreciate y'all taking your time out of your day to, to check this out. Give us just a second, we gotta mute a laptop. Perfect, okay. <laughs> This is the first time we've done this, so we might encounter a couple of little hiccups, but you know, we've got a great team here helping me out today to make this work. Uh, before I introduce them, I'm just gonna get the elephant in the room out of the way. Let's talk about my face just real quick and then we'll never mention it again. Uh, so this last weekend, I was helping to run cameras and do uh, video switching at Denton Arts and Jazz Festival. Uh, and we, there was a giant LED screen on the main stage. And normally it's up high in the air, it got lowered. I saw it get lowered. I was there when it happened, but I was just so used to taking this particular path out from our little booth out into uh, where the cameras were. And I just was on autopilot. And at the end of the night, I went and I just, bam, right into the back of all the sharp things on the back of this LED panel. Uh, so LED panel one, Shelly, zero, 18 stitches later, I'm good. It looks way worse than it feels. It actually doesn't even hurt that much. The one difference is that um, I can't wear my glasses. So a lot of people might recognize me because I have very dark glasses and stuff. I can't wear them because it's really uncomfortable. Uh, so we're doing contacts right now. I hate them. They're awful. Um, I am going to be checking my phone every once in a while because I might have some questions come up. I'm just making sure I don't know what that was. Nothing important. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, Let's talk about the people who are helping me because I could not do this alone. This is a lot of work. There's a lot of equipment. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say a big thank you to my boyfriend, Patrick Shader, for lending me the equipment, uh, the cameras. The, well, the lights are ours, I guess, but lending me the cameras, the, uh, the video switcher, the laptop, the uh, soundboard. I don't even know all the technical stuff that he gave me. So thank you, Patrick, appreciate it. Uh, he is for hire if you need his services. Um, next on the list, we've got Terry Buzzard, affectionately known as Buzz. So uh, I thought maybe we could call this everyone. a uh, Buzz plug. The Buzz plug. Yeah, so I'm plugging Buzz. So Buzz has a really cool, um, you can use that if you want. Uh, Buzz has a really cool, um, I don't know what you call it, a podcast or an update thing? It's like a what vlog you talk about? podcast. Yeah, it's a little podcast that just talks about everything that's going on in Denton. Um, I also do uh, one-on-ones with local charities and local businesses to kind of promote what they do, um, including restaurants, which is where the fun part's going to come in. So definitely look us up, The Buzz in Denton. I'm on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, and I believe the uh, link to the Facebook page should be on right now. And he also uh, lists it on, on YouTube, so I don't know how you... I don't, is the YouTube link in the Facebook page no, as if well? if you just look up the buzz in Denton, yeah, on just, YouTube. you'll find it. Cool. It comes up. Yeah, it's really cool. He actually uh, featured me and a couple other artist friends when we had our art show, and it was a lot of fun. And it's, it's cool. If, if you live locally and you want to know what's going on in Denton, that's the place to go. Uh, my other friend who has elected not to show up on camera is Aaron. Aaron is currently on a break from a tour. He runs pyrotechnics, uh, really cool, like dangerous, amazing stuff that you see at these concerts. And I believe he's on a break from KISS? On a break from KISS right now, kind of an unexpected break. Don't know why, we'll get into that later. Anyway, um, so, so very glad to have them here helping me. Uh, somebody who is not physically present but is also helping is my friend Livia, who is an amazing artist. Uh, on Instagram, she is Livia Alvarez underscore artist. I believe that should be on your screen right now. Uh, she is incredible. If you go to the website, which we'll talk about later, I've got some of her original work there that you can also purchase. Uh, and she is going to be helping provide links to uh, all of the artwork that we're going to be showing today. So if you decide to purchase something, all you got to do is click the link in the chat and just follow the instructions to order something. If you've ever ordered anything online, it's pretty simple. So, uh, so I think that's all the intros. I'm gonna look at my little, my little cheat sheet and see what's next on the agenda. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, oh, I gotta introduce myself. That makes sense. So hello, my name is Shelly Denning. If you don't know me, uh, I am an artist. I'm a visual artist. Uh, I do, I would say my main specialty is portraiture. I love the human face, the human figure. Uh, I love the emotion that you can get from, from a posture or a, an expression. And uh, that just, that's my thing. So I mostly do portraits, but I do a lot of other stuff as well. Um, I originally 
in when I graduated in 1990, mm -hmm, uh, I went into school to do illustration, and I didn't make it very long, money issues, whatever. So uh, now, um, well, then later, like fast forward way later, and I was helping my kids get into college. And while I was on these campuses, I was like, man, I really, I always regret dropping out, and I would love to go back and get my degree. So I just stopped making excuses, and I just did it. I enrolled at UNT, University of North Texas. And I graduated in uh, December of 2022 with my degree in um, uh, studio art, my BFA in studio art with a concentration in drawing and painting. However, while I was there, I took classes in uh, sculpture, metalworking, um, um, what did I try to say? Um, I, I told uh, jewelry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, ceramics, um, performance art, a little bit of everything. I just, I just like to make things. So got involved there and uh, a lot of the things that you're gonna see today are the product of my, my school days. And I'm trying to kind of clear out inventory so I can make room for making new stuff because my house is full and please take these things out of my house. Um, so another thing, another venture that I'm starting, a lot of you are probably familiar with is called Shelly's Art Space. Uh, the website is shellysartspace.com. Uh, I am on Instagram at, at Shelly's Art Space. Um, and I'm, I'm, the Instagram side, is, it's all really, really new. Uh, in the end, I hope for it to be basically, I wanna be the Walmart of the art world. If it's art related, I wanna have it. I wanna have art supplies. I wanna have studio space for rent. I want to have um, a little mini uh, maker space with 3D printers, laser cutters, things like that. I wanna have um, an art book library. Uh, of course, galleries, workshops, pretty much everything you can imagine. If it's art related, it will be at Shelley's Art Space. So right now I'm starting really, really, really slow because it's just me. Uh, and I am uh, doing workshops, conducting workshops and selling kits, art kits for those workshops. Um, that's kind of a, where I'm starting. I'm still working on some of the back end stuff like getting my logo done and everything. So I'm not 100% ready to go live, but I'm really, really close, y'all. Uh, actually, what you see behind me is some of the inventory that I've acquired so far. And very soon these will be in kits or ready to purchase, be ready to purchase uh, individually. So it's a lot of work, y'all. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to help and donate their time, I'd be happy to take on some interns. Um, also, I would love to do things like this, do these online art shows for other artists. So that's a service we'll talk about later and I'll, I'll be sure to, sh sure to share my, uh, my contact information with you later. So I think, I think that's the gist of all that. So, uh, Shelly, da, 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 da. oh, for Shelly's Art Space, if you wanna join my mailing list, uh, just go to shellysartspace.com and the main page it'll take you to uh, is, Right now, it's just one blank page that says, hey, join my mailing list. And that will help keep you apprised of anything uh, like the workshops that I've got coming up or any other art shows that I'm doing, um, any other events. And once we go live and, and any specials, I do have a thing where uh, I will start doing for your birthday month, you'll get some sort of special thing. So uh, please sign up, shellysartspace.com, and uh, hopefully we'll be going live within the next month or two. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so let's talk about how tonight's gonna go. So tonight is kind of about the art, but it's kind of about me and kind of about the story behind the art. Um, like I said, my friend Livia will be posting links to each piece that we talk about in the chat. So if you want to, and, and I'll probably post them in the description after um, after everything's done and I re repost it. But um, yeah, she'll post the link so you can see the, the pictures where you can zoom in and see everything in detail. That's not what we're really doing here today in on this show. I will show some of the art, but it's just gonna be me holding it up. You're not gonna see very much detail. And I'm gonna tell you why I made that art, uh, tell you the story behind it, how it came to be, um, what it means to me, those kind of things. Um, if you see something you love, click that link in the chat. Click the link and go It'll take you right to the item and you can purchase it. Um, if you live locally, you can come pick it up for me or I, I would be happy to deliver it. And when I say locally, I mean local to the Denton area, Denton, Texas area. If you're in Dallas, maybe we can meet in the middle. Um, 
Uh, if you are live further away, you'll have to select the shipping. And I'm sorry, some of these things are heavy and big and awkward. And yeah, shipping's going to cost a bit. I don't really have any control over that, unfortunately. So that's just how it goes. But here's a special thing I've got going just for this viewing. Uh, starting now through the end of October of 2023, if you enter this coupon code, you get 10% off your purchase. It's a one-time use. So get everything you want in the one shot, but you can use it through the end of October and it'll get you 10% off your entire purchase of original artwork. Uh, the code is ARTSHOW1023. ARTSHOW1023 and you should see that on your screen right now. So uh, type in that code and again, after December, uh, October 31st, it's no good. So, so go ahead and order uh, right now. Um, so I do want to encourage interaction. If you have any questions about the artwork or questions about me, feel free to put those in the chat. I've got um, I've got Buzz over here on the chat, and he will he will kind of chime in and let me know what kind of questions you have, and I'm happy to answer those. Also, if you go to the website where all the artwork is, so that would be shellysartspace.com forward slash original art. Uh, you'll see everything from all three artists there from a previous show I did. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can filter for adjust my art if you want to. And if you see something there that I didn't talk about that you would like to learn more ab about, uh, again, put that in the chat and Buzz will let me know and I'll, I'm happy to pull those up. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm just going to grab things and talk about them. So, um, uh, da -da. Uh, I did make this... YouTube broadcast 18 and up because there is some nudity in some of the work that I do. So I know if some of you are watching with your kids and you don't want them to see that, you might want to kind of gently have them go watch a TV show or, or something. So um, it's not, it's nothing pornographic, but you know, there is some nudity and I want to respect you guys and, and your wishes and how you raise your kids. Or if you are yourself are offended by it, it might not be the show for you. Um, let's see. I also have gift cards available for sale. Those are, oh, thanks. Uh, I have, um, if you go, again, go to um, Shelly'sArtspace.com forward slash gift card. Is it a gift card or gift cards? Gift card. Gift card, single, singular. If you go there, uh, you can purchase gift cards. So if you think you want to buy something but you're not really sure, you can get the 10% off of that right now. No, you can't. Just kidding. I made it so you can't. Sorry. That was a lie. Anyway, I can fix that if you want one. Let me know. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can buy a gift card. You can give it as a gift. I mean, what better gift than to give a portrait to somebody? I can do custom work as well. I'll do commissions. So, um, yeah, and you can make your own increments, whatever you want. Um, or you could use it for future workshops. You can use it for future supplies. Whatever I have on Shelly's Art Space, you can use that gift card for. Um, let's see. Do, 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 gift cards. Oh, okay, here's a special thing. So um, to just uh, for this viewing only, I guess I could make it through the end of, December, end of October. Through the end of October, any purchase you make, for every $50 that you spend, you'll get a free print. A free uh, print of my original work that I did a while back. It's some of my older work, and I've got a bunch of that stuff. Um, they will be random. I'm just gonna pick one and throw it in there, but it'll be a free signed print and it'll be dated and probably numbered. Uh, so every $50 you spend, you get one. So if you spend 150 bucks, you get three of them. I mean, it's free art, why not? Uh, okay, so we are gonna have prizes during this show. I know, I'm sorry, I'm rambling on. Uh, we're gonna have prizes. So we're gonna have three drawings f uh, just based on whoever's, in, whoever's uh, tuned in right now. Uh, and for those, draw those, we'll have three different prizes we'll talk about as we go. The final prize, will be a uh, custom eight by 10 watercolor portrait. You could also do pencil and graphite or pencil and charcoal if you want to. So I'm giving you that option, but it's an eight by 10 single person in the portrait, uh, but it'll be whoever you want and I'll, I'll paint or draw that for you. Uh, that will be a trivia question based on something that we've discussed in the show. So if you weren't here at the beginning and maybe I said at the beginning, then you might've missed it. So, um, Maybe you just guess. Anyway, um, we'll have that at the end of the show. Uh, da, 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 da. Prizes, okay. Heidi says you're doing amazing. Hi, Heidi, thank you so much, thanks. I feel like I'm rambling, but this is totally new for me. I don't know that we'll do many more of these because I feel really weird, but 
That's cool. I'm really glad you're tuning in. Thank you so much for watching and to everybody else who's who's there or, or again, watching later. I know a lot of people couldn't make it. And that's kind of the reason I was doing this was because I had an art show, like a big in-person art show that went really, really well. Uh, and I had a lot of, lot of great people show up for that. Um, but a lot of people either couldn't make it that night or don't live close enough to come. So I'm kind of doing this for them so they can see the art and see what's going on. Also, the people that were there, they didn't really get to hear about the individual pieces. So this is for everybody. So I hope you all enjoy it. Um, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna kind of do this in three sections. The first section I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk about some of the ceramics I've worked on. Uh, second will be metals and other sculpture. And then the final will be um, all my drawings and paintings. So let's, um, you know what, before we get in there, why don't we go ahead and do a prize? You wanna do a prize drawing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How many people do we have in the chat? Uh, one. One? Well, then we probably... Oh, so far, I'll ask, tell them to, to enter, see if they got some. Okay. Tell them to, to add something to check. So no, it'll only... Sh so far. Okay, but it should show you everybody that's in there. If you go click the top right, the little three buttons, it'll show you uh, oh, people okay. participating. Do you see? Do you see it? One. One. Is Heidi the one on? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we don't have to do a drawing. Heidi, you just want a free print. I want to do the wheel. Oh, he wants it. I'm just kidding. You want to do the wheel with one person on it? Don't. Well, hopefully you'll get to do it. Unfortunately, you can only win once, so. Uh, so I apologize. But... Oh, it's too late. We already did it. So Heidi, you win one print, and I will get in touch with you. If you can, uh, can you private message? Um, mm -hmm. Is it just under Terry Buzzard? Is it okay? Can you private message Terry Buzzard? and send him your email address. And then I will get in touch with you about uh, which print we're gonna send you. Ooh, Did you get the private message? Uh, not yet. I don't know, if, people, I don't know if you can. More people are starting to pop in. If you can't send a private message, because I've never actually done the YouTube live, uh, you can just, um, just, you know what, I know who you are. You know what, I'll just write it down. I'm gonna write it down. You don't have to send anything. Heidi, prize one, done, done. I'll be in touch, okay. So let's start talking about the artwork. How about that? So um, let's, I guess uh, we're gonna go into ceramics. So let's start small. Um, I'll start with this. I, I made a bunch of little uh, earrings and all of them have sold at this point, except for these. And I was kind of disappointed because I think they're so cute. They are a little heavy. So you gotta have like good strong earlobes. But yeah, this was one day I was in the ceramics lab and I had some extra uh, clay cut up um, and just started cutting little shapes and doing textures and just having fun with them and um, putting the holes in. So when it was done, I just made these. So these are, I think these are so cute. And I hope somebody somebody gets them. Somebody who like likes a big statement piece. So I will definitely be doing more ceramic jewelry because I think it's really fun and you can make some neat stuff. So that's, that's those. Uh, let's see, uh-oh, I keep losing. I keep losing my little microphone fuzzy thing. I don't know if it makes a difference. Okay. Um, so here's a series. Actually, let me start with just this one little random piece. So this was fun. We had to make test tiles in class, and they had us extruding these um, like square shapes. And I was like, that's so boring. I wouldn't. I don't want to make a piece just to make a piece. That's like just to test out like um, glazes. So I ended up using the hexagonal, excuse me, the hexagonal um, extruding mold. I don't know what you call it. Um, and yeah, something. And then, and then I made bottoms for all of them. And then I cut them, the, each one, I made a bunch of them. I cut each top a little bit different and kind of jaggedy. This one I had a lot of fun just kind of laying down the glazes in different patterns and just seeing, like using different tools. Um, I think this is the last one I had. I had a bunch of these, and this is the last one I have. So I'm selling this as a little bud base, where you can pencil hold or whatever you want to do with it. But I think it's I think it's really cute, and I had a lot of fun making these. So I'm gonna put these over here if you want to wrap them up. You're welcome to. Um, these two came from a hand building class. Uh, I actually made a couple other pieces, but they're they're just awful. Um, they cracked really badly. I wanted to make a ramen set. Uh, so I made a bowl uh, and a spoon and I made a little holder where you can put the spoon in the holder uh, rather than putting it on the table and it also holds your chopsticks so you can go back and forth between spoon and chopsticks. Unfortunately, it cracked really badly so 
that one's kind of out. Um, I also made like an oil um, decanter. Lid didn't fit great, so you know, this was one of my first classes, y'all. But I kind of like these little hand-built plates that I made that went along with that. They were all kind of in the same, they were using the same colors, these, these kind of blue and whites. And uh, so I've got like a little soy sauce dish and a little side dish, or it can be like for banchan or whatever. Um, so these can go as a set or they're, they can be sold individually. Uh, I still, I think they're really cute and I have my little stamp on the bottom. Um, so these are made in 2021. So anyway, these are really cute and I love them. Um, let's see, oh. Okay, and then also in the hand building class, uh, our final project was kind of a do whatever you want. And so I really wanted, because sometimes I make jewelry, I really wanted some cool jewelry display things where I could take pictures of the jewelry in them, but I, I'm also a little twisted and weird, so I wanted them to be like severed body parts. Um, so I made like this hand as a ring display uh, with the little bone sticking out, and it's like bloody. Um, and I just, I just thought it was really fun. Unfortunately, when I was, when I fired it, some of the, some of the glaze kind of ran away and I had to reglaze it and stuff. It's not my favorite piece. It, it definitely could have come out better and I'll probably retry this again sometime later, but it is on sale. Uh, I, I think it was $15 off on my website. So this one's cool. And then I also made a little um, earring display. So it has three different spots that you can put your earrings and either display them or hold them or just use it as a cute little sculpture of a severed ear. I thought it was fun. Um, and then this one's a bracelet display. So you've got your, your little bones sticking out there. And this is kind of a, it was made mostly to support, but it's supposed to look like, like blood just kind of dripping down. Uh, again, the, the glaze kind of pulled away a little bit and I had to reglaze it. Um, but it's kind of cool. You can just put a bracelet there or just use it as a sculpture again, if you're just weird like me. So that's those pieces. I had another bigger piece for a necklace, but it cracked really badly and um, like was very sharp. Uh, it, I, I, like, I got cut on it a couple times. I just threw it away. It was just no saving that guy. Um, okay, so then let's move on to, well, I did a mold making project uh, in, what well, was my molds and multiples class. Um, and I, I ended up molding like one of those styrofoam uh, heads, like you put wigs on or whatever. And so my ex-husband had uh, recently passed as well, and I had collected all of his old medications. And I just thought it was really crazy that like I had this giant bag of medicine that was meant to save his life and it didn't do it. And I just had this weird relationship with medication at that point. I'm like, you know, we spend so much money on these things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't but we also rely on them for so many things. And it's just, I don't know, it just left me with a weird feeling. Like I get it, I have medications I take every day and, and I think they help, um, but I don't know, it just, it just left a weird taste in my mouth. So I, I called the series Pharmageddon, like pharmaceuticals, but Pharmageddon, like, like where are we going with this? And I didn't, I don't really have an opinion either way, but I, I don't know, I just, I haven't decided how I feel about it. Like, they're definitely helpful, but they're not always. So, so anyway, in conjunction with that head, I molded a bunch of his pill bottles, and I made a bunch of little pieces. Like, I made this little guy. I made a bunch of these little um, pill bottles in ceramic, and I called these um, stash hideaways. You can put whatever you want in there, and it just looks like a little piece of sculpture laying on the ground or laying on your table. Um, some of them I put holes in the top and made bud bases, and I may make some more later, but um, this little guy is the last one of the pill bottles that I have. Um, but then I did some other pieces, like, um, like this one is just, just the head, but I cut it off, and it looks really cool with some, like, it doesn't have a bottom in it, but I put dead flowers in it, and I don't know, I thought it was kind of interesting that that thing between like a head and life and then dead flowers. So I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. It does look really neat with the dead flowers just sticking out a bit as a sculpture on its own. Um, let's see. This one, this one I like too. This one actually came out pretty well. And um, 
So this one I incorporated some of the pill bottles in here and then put some just dead, dead stuff in here too. Um, and this one we did, I, I love this finish, this glaze that I put on it was really cool. Kind of a charcoal black um, finish. So it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not glossy. Uh, so it has some little pill bottles in the top, different kinds of pill bottles. I left those unglazed because I want them to look really raw, um, almost like they're like they're in this head, like they exist in this head in their raw state, but they're maybe causing damage, maybe helping, who knows? So I kind of, I don't know, that's one of my favorites. I really like that one. Um, so this one was meant to be a two-part piece uh, this one I think I also discounted on the website because it, in the kiln, it, um, I don't know, it just, it kind of smushed and cracked. Uh, I liked the way it was looking, but it just, uh, it messed up in the kiln. So this one's kind of a discount piece. And then it has this base that goes with it that it was meant to just kind of sit on top. It doesn't, it still kind of does, but you don't want to hit it too hard or it might fall over. Uh, one thing that I thought was kind of cool is if you take like a little light, I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but if you take a little light and put it in there, it kind of glows and glows through the little hole in the head. And, and you know, it could be a cool like Halloween decoration with or without the base. So that was kind of, I think I called this one, I don't know what I called this one. It's, <laughs> it's on the wing, maybe Livia, maybe if you can remember what I called this one. I might've called it propped up. I tried to use all kind of like pill themes, like propped up on pills, you know? Okay, <clears throat> so there's that guy. And then this one, I went kind of in a, into a zombie theme. Again, it kind of cracked and, and stuff, so I believe this one's a discount too, but um, I really liked the look of it. I liked how the, the glaze kind of frosted over the wound, so it's like not so in your face, like my face is right now, but more um, kind of diffused. This one also has a base um, of various pill bottles. Same thing, it kind of warped a little so it doesn't fit perfectly, but there it is. Um, so you can do the same thing with the light here. I don't know if you can kind of see it shining through. So and there's that, okay. Cool, thank you. So then um, my final year of college, we did, oh wait, I had one more hand building piece. This one was kind of a free-for-all. It was an extruded piece. You had to extrude the clay and do whatever you want. Um, and I just kind of, I called it a, um, a ceramic sketch because I just kind of made stuff and then started building. I just started sculpting and building. I didn't have a plan in mind. I just wanted to see where the clay took me. Where does the clay want to go? So, um, and I love anatomy. Human anatomy, I think, is just fascinating. And so I kind of tried to do some things that were very anatomical and very uh, organic with this piece. So like this could be kind of like a bone maybe or some sort of orifice. This, I mean, obviously looks like a tongue and this is kind of tongue-ish, tongue, tongue -ish. these are tongue-ish. Um, honestly, I definitely just decided these were all little vaginas. So it is what it is. Uh, I wanted it to be kind of like, it looks like something that might come out of the sea and, um, you know, I think that's where we're all from. We all came from the sea way, way back when. And um, how did we get here? And it was all through, through sex. I mean, if we wouldn't be here without sex. And so I wanted to be kind of sexual and, like, almost a little uncomfortable to look at unless you're, like, really cool with all that stuff. So um, it's got a lot of, like, drips that, you know, that can be whatever you want it to be. But I think it's a really cool piece. I'm really proud of this one. I don't know how you would, you might have to make some like some sort of hanging device to be able to put it up. Uh, but I, would, I just really love this piece. I love just touching it. It's got some great textures on it and I think it's really cool. So I hope y'all hope y'all like it too. That's, this is one of my favorites. And if somebody buys it, it'll be hard to part with, but, um, but I'd be ha happy to send it to a new home. So. Okay, so then moving on to, um, to my last year. So we had a couple of cool assignments. Um, <clears throat> my final assignment, I'm gonna start with that one first. The final assignment was something about, um, I think it was called, I don't remember what it was called, but it was something about how we connect with each other. And I, I've had a lot of history with um, like my ex-husband and even my kids sometimes, spending a lot of time online. 
And because they're always online, I don't get to interact with them in person. And I feel like I miss out on a lot. I think they miss out on a lot. I'm sorry, is, if that's too loud, I don't know what, what the mics are picking up, but if the bubble wrap is really loud, let me know and we can pause, but it's probably okay. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so I thought about the, the difference between the digital world and real life. And I had a couple of ideas for this project that didn't all pan out. So what I ended up doing was one piece, which was a, a little vase <clears throat> that is pixelated. And on one side, it has a heart, like love it and like a happy face, like, but it's, it's manufactured happiness. Like it's not real. It exists in a digital realm and, and it will always be there and it'll always be fresh and always be perfect. Just like the digital flowers that go in it. These will never wilt, they'll never die because they're not real. And you can just kind of place them in there however you want. And it goes along with a few other pieces. Now, um, there were four originally, I did sell one. Uh, I will sell these as individual pieces. Uh, I'd love for them to go together, but that's up to you guys. So each of the pieces that went with it, and you see these were vibrant colors, blues, reds, greens, yellows, very bright. For the other pieces, I did earth tones and kind of very broken down. I, I spun these on the wheel and then I messed them up a little bit. So this one, I kind of caved the sides in and I put um, different images on them. I don't know if it picks up real well here, but you can see them on the website. Um, this one has a laptop. Uh, so it's all things that you would use digitally. But these are the things that are leading to our de destruction, or to our decay. I think they have a place. I mean, I'm using them right now, of course, but I think the overuse is just, it's changing who we are as people. So that was one. Another one has a VR headset. Um, you know, people just tune out and I've like made a, a specific, like a, I made a crack in it and like little fake cracks all through. Cause again, I want them to look like they're decaying and falling apart. Uh, the final one is, uh, this one I like because the glaze really ran a lot. So I've got this look like a keyboard uh, and I had some spots where I made it look like the glaze had broken off. And this one actually, because it melted so much, um, you've got these cool spots where it actually did break off a little bit. So it kind of added to that realism. So and I've still got this thing just, just glowing and flashing. There we go. So that's that set. And um, I don't know, I think it was, it was a fun project to do. So those are good. Okay, so the final ceramic project I wanted to, oh, there's two more, sorry. One of the last projects I wanna talk about, we were given an assignment to do, um, what time is it, by the way, can you tell me? 7.07. Okay, we're, we're doing okay, I think. I need, I need to speed up a little bit. Uh, one of the projects was to do, um, it was something about consumption. Uh, and I just, man, I could not figure out what to do. And then I was listening to the radio one day and they were talking about some country in Europe where um, they hadn't had rain in like decades. Like I can't even imagine. And because of that, cattle, like cattle were dying uh, and so meat was very, very expensive. And I thought about that in relation to our country where like we eat meat all the time. We throw it out if it's not, if it's a little bit funny or if we just didn't, couldn't finish our plate or whatever, we just throw it in the trash. And I thought about all the food that we waste in this country. So it started with that and then it kind of bled into another realm where I thought about um, not only do we waste food, but we, we waste people, we waste art, we waste ideas. Um, and I thought about my relation as a 40-something person going to college with all these 20-something kids. Ooh, sorry, that's just bubble wrap. Just bubble wrap, okay. Um, uh, you know, and I felt like, I, I felt like I was not valid anymore, you know, and I thought about things that were cool when I was their age, like in the 90s, and like, okay, there's these, you know, the Trapper Keeper designs and Lisa Frank and stuff, and now that's just considered like so old school, nobody cares, nobody likes it anymore. Sometimes it makes a resurgence, but mostly it's like, oh, you're old, you don't, you know, what you say doesn't matter anymore because you're, you're just not valid in today's society. So I just did this series, which kind of took both of those concepts. So the stakes, um, I, made, I made ceramic stakes, and I put designs on them that were kind of like something you might have seen in the 90s. Some of these, again, these Trapper Keeper designs, and I put expired on it. Uh, because it's it's just no good anymore. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Um, 
So I made five of these. I did make the trays in ceramic as well. And they're kind of, you know, the, the plastic's ripped and some of these are, they're cracked and, and they, you know, they're, they're falling apart, but that just really plays into the whole idea of the piece. It's just, it's old, it's been discarded. Um, but I think it could be a cool piece. They all have holes in the back uh, that line up with holes in the stake um, that, so that it can be hung on the wall as well if you want to display them that way or you can display them just laying down. Uh, so this is one of them. I've got five. I did a whole other series with this. I ended up making 10 where I did, um, I did artwork. I decorated them based on old artwork, some of the Impressionists and some of the early 1900s, uh, Mark, Mark Rothko. Um, uh, anyway, I, sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now because I'm like trying to just go. Anyway, I, but those I'm going to keep because I would like to use those for shows. But, um, but these five are available for purchase if you would like a really weird art piece that uh, will definitely drum up some weird conversations in your parties. So one more. So there's that one. So these are really fun to do. I, I really enjoyed doing this. I still have this mold and may, may continue on that series. So there's those. Um, these go in that box, yeah. Okay, so the final, final ceramic piece was, this was also back in the mold making class. Erin, um, this is one you might have to change the view on. So I made four different, four different shapes, and you'll have to forgive my table. This is my cutting and work table, so it's kind of a mess. Oh, and a stupid thing keeps coming off. Let me see if I can keep it on there. Okay, there. So I've got four different shapes. Let's see, and there are twelve total tiles. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and so you can visit, you can put them in any kind of shape that you want. Um, I'm not going to take them all out, but um, what they're meant to be is it's meant to like mimic water and waves and be very peaceful. All the colors are very like spa colors, you know, very pastel -y. And what you can do is take any kind of objects. I think I discovered that like a chopstick worked pretty well. And because they're all different shapes, you can run, run something over them. You can tap them or run something over them and make different sounds. So anyway, it's meant to be kind of soothing. Um, I thought it might be cool if these were displayed so they all have, again, holes on the back so they can be hung up on a wall. Um, I thought it'd be cool if these were displayed like over, over a, um, a fountain or some sort of pond or something and you could have water running over them. I haven't experimented with the water to be honest, so I don't know if they would make a different sound. So I think that's it for ceramics. So let me put these back in the box and then we will move on to, um, I think we're gonna move on to our next prize drawing. Let me just get these put away if I don't break them. Okay, so that's done. This box is good to go. And then, uh, if you want to, I'm gonna grab a drink of water because my throat's getting a little, a little tired. How are you doing? Do y'all have any questions for me? If anyone has any questions, please, please feel free to put those in the chat and I'm, I'll answer anything. Uh, well, just about anything. Do you wanna, Buzz, do you wanna do the next prize drawing for us? Okay, hold on. Yeah. If we have, if we yeah, have enough people. Second, yeah, there's yeah. several people in there right oh, now. Oh, cool, yay, hi everybody. Give me just a few minutes to get set up. Okay. While he's, woo, I'm going to pull, pull things off this table. While he's doing that, um, I'll go ahead and start on the next category, which is metals um, and other. So let's see. I'm going to lean over here. Let's just see what's in the box. Everybody left. Think. Yeah, there was a few people in there. When I mm -hmm. go to the distance now, there's just a couple. There's just Heidi in there again. Oh, is she the only one there right now? Yeah, there was like a few people in there just a few minutes ago. Oh, weird. Okay, well, maybe Thank we'll... You, Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. Well, let's wait a few more minutes. Uh, if you see some more people pop up, um, we'll, we'll do it then. Okay. okay. So let's go ahead and get through metals and other. So uh, for metals, I, you know, I never thought I would get into metals, but I started doing it, and I just, I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I did one series 
this was funny. We had to um, we had to make shapes, just random shapes on paper, and uh, then we had to go around the room and look at everybody else's shapes, and then we had to determine if we liked our shapes or we wanted to use someone else's shapes. We had to pick three. I can't do it three. Um, so I picked um, this little pointy shape, this little roundy shape, and then this big kind of heart shape. Um, and then we had to put them together somehow. So using the shapes that I picked, I made this piece, uh, this series, and I called it Heart Strings. Because to me, it looked like, uh, well, I put the, the four in the middle, so it was like strings, like a, like a cello, a bass, a viola, a violin. Um, so you got your four strings, and to me, this was kind of the motion of playing, and then this was the bow or arm or whatever. Um, they were all done with different te techniques. This one was, this one was enamel. Um, I think this was most uh, partly cloisonné, uh, where so I put in silver strips and then filled them in with enamel and. Um, and then put it in the oven. Uh, so this one, and it is uh, counter, counter enameled on the back. So these are copper. So that one, and then I've got this one uh, was done with, uh, you put gesso on, <laughs> you put gesso on the copper and then use colored pencils. Uh, and then I sealed it with some, uh, just some uh, spray sealer. So that one was fun. And I tried to, this one I wanted to look more like, like the wood grain. Uh, so this is actually, um, I think I just etched into it with, with a scribe, the, the four lines. I believe I have one more. One of them did sell uh, at the art show, so I've got one left. This one, oh, this one was fun. I actually did chemical etching to get the lines in this one. It's kind of hard to see unless you see it in person. Um, and then the rest is, oh, I did some, uh, I think I did some hammering to get some texture onto this piece and then uh, did a clear enamel on this. So you really see the glow of the copper through it. It's really pretty. I like that one a lot. So that's those guys. Uh, there was another piece. So this was done during, during COVID. So I was in school in the middle of COVID when um, everything shut down. And we were given an assignment to do pretty much whatever we wanted, I think, in, in one of my medals classes. And Luckily, I had already kind of set up a, an at-home uh, metal studio, so I was able to do some work where a lot of people weren't. Um, and I had some brass and some copper I'd, I had just that I'd brought home. So I did this piece, and I, I thought about how we were so divided. Like, everybody's sick. Everybody's dying. It's a bad time. You would think that's when we would come together, but I feel like it pushed us more apart. So I did this piece... Um, where there's the blue on one side and the red on the other side to not so subtly um, describe our um, political parties. Uh, and I did all these little little balls of, um, of copper uh, and just adhered them to this base and then coated them in the color. And I made it to where it's, it is a necklace, but it's kind of not. Like you can't, you can't comfortably wear it. You can wear it but then you can't lean back because you'll mess up the back of it. And that's the thing, like this division shouldn't be comfortable. It's not good. If we would come together and all be on the same side, this would be a totally comfortable piece of jewelry to wear. So yes, it is a piece of jewelry, but it's more of a statement and more of a um, sculpture, is the way I put it. Uh, hold on, and this was a bad idea because now it's all stuck in my hair. So give me just a second here. Okay, we're all good. Okay, anyway, I was, I, I enjoyed, doing that piece. Um, okay, what's next? So I've got this piece. This was one we did, uh, I don't, oh, this was a creative chain project. So uh, the chain, I did this, I made all the chain pieces and that was really fun. But I made this piece that's um, one of the, uh, a planchette, like a, for, for your Ouija board. Sorry, it gets very tangled very easily. Anyway. So um, this was a really fun piece to make. I wanted to make something really uh, decorative and just fun. And so I've got these little moons here and all these little crystals I added. So all these chain pieces I made, these pieces I made by uh, flattening some wire and then twisting them. Um, so each little moon, I've got different phases of the moon throughout the piece. 
And then the planchette, I put, um, I chemical, did chemical etching on it. Again, it's hard to see probably on the camera, but in real life you can see there's a cool little design in it. Uh, and then this is, this, I did the same thing as I did with this, because I think I did this one first and I just loved the way that the copper glowed through the enamel. So I did the same on this one. And, uh, and then I added some resin in the middle and it actually works fairly well as a magnifying glass. So, um, and I made just a simple, simple latch there. So this is a really piece, pretty piece. I've worn it before. Um, it looks great with any kind of fantasy, fantasy looks um, or like Gothic looks and stuff. It does get a little stuck They're in the hair if you've got piece. long hair. Yo, good, yay, thanks. I love it. I just, I think it's so pretty and I love sparkly things too. So this was more of like a, you know, sometimes I do political stuff. This was just pure fun. I just thought it'd be a good thing to do. Um, okay, so here's one. <laughs> See, I cannot keep this, I cannot keep this thing on there. I don't know, does it sound okay without it? Y'all, does it sound okay without this little fuzzy thing on my microphone? Because it keeps coming off. 20, 30 second delay. Okay, it's 20, 30 second delay. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave it off for a second. If y'all say it sounds awful without the fuzzy thing, I'll put it back on. Um, the question is, what's the length on that? Oh, the length, uh, where'd it go? Okay, so the table, if you wanna angle down, each one of these squares is an inch. So one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I don't know, approximately. It sounds fine without the cover. Oh, great, thank you. So I guess with the little danglies, it's about 14 inches. Um, I can put it on and you can see kind of where it lays on me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tiny, but so it kind of just lays there. Um, yeah, I did make it so that you could wear something low cut and it would still show and not like sink underneath, but you could also wear something with a higher neck. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a fun piece. So it's brass, it's a mix of brass and copper. And I've, I've coated it in wax to help uh, keep from tarnishing, but it will need... Um, it'll probably need cleaning every, or re-waxing every once in a while as it starts to wear off, which is pretty typical with copper. And this is, I can't see, so I can't get it off. There we go. Okay. That one, this should all be on the website again. So. Um, okay, so next piece, this was in actually my, um, how many people do we have right now? Uh, do we have enough to do a drawing? Just the two? Okay, we'll just oh, wait. Let me look, let me look, let me look. That's all I'm seeing chatting. Oh, we've got, yeah, that's it. That's it, okay. Besides the bust three. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so we'll just move on. Um, so in one class I did, um, I'm trying, it was a mold, it was another mold, no, it was monuments and multiples is what it was. So it wasn't uh, a ceramic class, it was for um, like more like large scale things. Uh, and again, this was in the middle of COVID, so we kind of we're kind of limited. Okay, everything's available on the website. Um, if you want to purchase, you can just go straight to the website and use that code. What was the code? Uh, Art show. Here, can they pay more? Sorry. If they show up here, can they pay more? What is right now? Oh, if they show up here at my house? Yeah, can they pay more money? No, they, no, they can pay for it on the website, pay less, and then they can just <laughs> come pick it up. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, so this class we we were doing, um, I don't remember what the assignment was. Oh, we were doing bronze casting. And I had originally, in my one of my uh, medals classes, wanted to make little um, nipple earrings. I thought they'd be really fun, little bronze earrings that were nipple shaped. I mean, that's fun, right? Um, and then COVID happened, we didn't get to do the casting. I was really disappointed. Uh, so I still had one, some sculptures that I had made and decided to do a few more for this later class and made a whole like mobile out of it. And I, I, it's just a way of saying like what we think about nudity. I mean, in Europe and other countries, some other countries, they don't, nudity is not a big thing, but here, why is it so weird? Why are we so freaked out by a nipple? Like we all have them and they're just nipples. Then this, in this art piece are just nipples you don't know if they're male or female. So if I tell you it's male, you're like, oh, whatever. But if I tell you, no, those are female nipples, suddenly it's, it, you're, you know, people freak out. And I just don't get that. I think it's weird. Like, like, especially as an artist, I've seen a lot of naked bodies and it's just not that big of a deal. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know, man. It just weirds me out. So anyway, I made, I decided to break apart that mobile, oh, I called it, oh, baby, because it was like, has two connotations, right? Like a baby, you know, drinks milk from a breast. So a baby is going to, and that's why I made it to a mobile, like a baby mobile, like in their little crib. But also saying, oh, baby, you know, that's a, has a totally different connotation depending on how you say it. So anyway, uh, I broke them apart and I made the heavier ones into necklaces and the, and the smaller nipples into earrings. So these are, I've got, there's, there's a couple of different designs, but uh, they are all 100% solid bronze. They were a real big pain to make because I had to do the sculpture, make them, put them on the little, or cast them in wax, make sure the wax was clean and then uh, put them on a little tree and we had to send them off to the foundry. They get cast, then I've got to grind them all off and, or cut them all off and then grind all the bronze down. It was a lot of work, a lot of work, but I think they came out really cool. So I've got these, I've got one, two, three, I think four, four bronze uh, nipple necklaces left. And I've got several earrings and um, I've got like, they're kind of different sizes. There's like medium ones and some small ones. Uh, you can see better pictures again on the website, but these are, um, and some are, have gold, um, like gold uh, hooks and some have kind of a bronzy colored hook. So it just depends on what you like. But uh, these were really fun to make and um, yeah, they're just really cool. And, I think I might make some more of these later, like out of resin or something, to do a, a cheaper version or more inexpensive version. But the pure bronze is really cool, and I just I think they're a neat statement piece. A uh, couple things left in the metals category. Uh, we needed we had to make a shadow puppet, and um, I have a friend named Jupiter who does some amazing drag work, and I just love her to death. And uh, another friend named Sarah. Uh, who I think it's Seraphim, Seraphim Art, I think, is her Facebook page. Um, and she's an incredible photographer, like gorgeous, gorgeous work. And so, and I've actually used her work a couple of times in my pieces. So this was one I used. Uh, my friend Jupiter had this beautiful picture uh, of herself in this dress. So I made a little Jupiter and I made it so you can move her little hand and you can move her wings. I gave her wings and I just, I think they're so fun. And uh, yeah, that was a really fun piece to do. So there's a little bit of bronze, a little bit of um, copper and a lot of it's just riveted. Well, it's all, I think it was all riveted. I think that was the whole point. I think the assignment was to do, do different kinds of riveting. So, um, so yeah, oh, and her waist moves too and the wings, oh, that's just one piece, yeah. So anyway. I thought that was a really fun piece. I did, um, um, what am I trying to say? On the, so the, the dark is, I um, can't think of the word. Anyway, anyway, there it is. It's a cool little shadow puppet. Um, so before that, like one of the very, very first pieces we did in my medals class was a hinged pendant. So I was like, oh my God, I can make a hinge? Like it was all very scary, but and this was another one where I used one of Seraphim's, Sarah's uh, photographs of a friend, another friend, Logan, or Cole, Logan, Logan, uh, who does drag. And I thought it would be fun to have a pretty, you know, like it's a gorgeous woman in a pretty dress, but then you open it and there's a little surprise. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little surprise. Um, you can see that better on the website, but uh, yeah, I thought that was a really fun one. And my mom, who I think is tuning in right now, she was like, oh, I just love that. I want that. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Anyway, I think that was, that was one of my first pieces, and I, was, I thought it was a lot of fun. While we're staying on the private parts uh, theme, uh, we were doing... I got a request to do the, uh, the website again. Okay. Can you show the website? Uh, Shawnee. 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 That's my mom. Oh, okay. That's my mom. So the website to buy stuff is uh, shelliesartspace.com forward slash original art. I believe that's being put up on the screen right now. Um, so one of the other pieces I did in, in our metals class was we were doing um, electroforming. And so I sculpted a little vagina and I electroformed it, which was really cool. So the anodes and the diodes and the, I don't even know what I don't remember anymore. But uh, you put it in this bath and, and the copper kind of forms to it. And then I had to, you know, smooth it down and sand it out and everything. Uh, and I made this little vagina, which I'm so sad because I had actually put inside, there's a little, um, 
a little picture of a heart and you were able to push the button and it would light up and the, the LED died. So you can't do that anymore, but it still has a little soft button here and there is still a heart in there because I was like, that's where all life begins, you know? So I thought it was really fun. Um, I love it. If you're into weird stuff like this, feel free to buy it and wear it. Unfortunately, it doesn't light up anymore, which is really sad, but I still think it's a cool piece. Or you can just put it on, put it on your Christmas tree or hang it from your rear view mirror and, you know, have some conversations. So that's it for medals. Um, I can show you a couple of uh, the things in the other category. I'm just gonna kinda put these in here real quick. And then I think we discovered that before we do a drawing, we want to run it down so we can have everybody make a comment. They don't need to comment. The fell off they don't need to comment. Just go to the, it'll show you who's on. I understand, but show me. Shawnee. Mm -hmm. She had, she I guess was in there, but she fell off in the uh, area, so that's where the confusion kinda came out. Mm -hmm. Then again, that's my mom. She can get a print anytime she wants. <laughs> she probably has all these pieces already <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> like, sorry, mom. I don't think you count for this for those. I mean, if you want a print, I'll give you a print. No, no. I'm I'm totally including mom. I'm telling her she can have whatever she wants. Okay. Um, can you hand me uh, the thing on top, the little one? Yeah. So I'm afraid to touch. I know. Right now, it's not that delicate. Wow. So this one was done in a my sculpture. No, this was actually done in a metals class, strangely, I think. Um, it was using the laser cutter. And so I made these little things where you can, you can arrange it however you want. They all spin. And, like, it could say life is life or life is the future. And then you can make yourself whatever you want. Do you want to be a beardy guy with some boobs and, and, and a Batman cape? You can be that. You can be whatever you want. Um, you know, I mean, of course, of course I want to be Batman. I mean, who doesn't want to be Batman? So, oh, here's the Batman. Anyway, so you can make it whatever you want. And you know what? We're all part of this world. And, and that's what makes the world go around. So anyway, I just thought it was kind of fun. I put like this kind of glowy thing behind it. So you can change the, the, what it says. They don't all make sense, but it's art. It doesn't have to make sense, right? Uh, I mean, life is life. I like that. I think this one actually is called uh, The Future Is Now, or no, the t now is, now is, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, it's on the website. And it does have a little um, enameled bronze, no, enameled um, copper hook back here. So that's pretty strong and it'll, you can put that on your wall and you can change the look every day if you want to. Okay, last one, that big guy there. You just, yeah, it's all together. It's, it's, it's not delicate. So um, this one, we might have to move the camera to see. I don't know, it's kind of big. I don't know I don't know what your view is if I do like that. Um, excuse me. So this was also right before COVID. I was in my sculpture class and our, we were doing a class on uh, using the CNC router, the wood, the wood router. And I was like, excuse me, I was like on it. I'm like, let's do this. Let's get this thing done. So it was me and another girl. Um, we partnered up to do this project and I, I mapped out all the cuts that we would need to make to make this happen. I got them cut. I was the first one to do our cuts. So when COVID came and knocked us all out of school, I already had my pieces. And so I had them here and I've got some woodworking supplies at home. So I was like, you know what? I can finish this. I can get this done at home. I think we were the only ones to actually finish our project. Um, I wanted it to be kind of funny. So I think we were, we were building it for a project that had to be something pet related. And so I thought this would be cool. You know how like cats love sitting in boxes. I was like, well, let's make a stack of boxes. So we've got, so it's all wood, but, um, we made one to look like a cardboard moving box and then a pizza box and then your, um, Chinese delivery food box on top. So I called it moving day cause it looks like, you know, you're moving and what do, you don't, you don't have all your stuff unpacked, so you can't do, you can't use the kitchen, so you order takeout. And it does have a hole in it, so your cat can like climb in through or go underneath or whatever. You don't have a cat, use it as a sculpture, put a plant in it, whatever. Um, so the other girl uh, that I did the assignment with, and I honestly can't remember her name, it was a long time ago. Um, she designed this cute 
it's kind of hard to see, but she designed this cute little cover for the pizza box, and it says uh, Fat Cat. It's Fat Cat Pizza, and it's got a cute little cat. I did the painting, but she did the design. I just transferred it here. So, um, and even the um, the takeout box has the little little design on it. So, um, yeah. So, what's it say on that side? This end up, and on this side, it says uh, cat toys. It is. It's not super heavy, but it's not super light. It's very sturdy. Um, so, this would make a great addition to to your living room or. Or your garden you might have to seal it a little bit, but I think it's. I thought it was a really fun piece. Uh, it would cost a fortune to ship, but I can do it. Okay. So how are we doing on? Oh, is it still just the two? Uh, let me double look. What time is that? Oh, we still got an hour. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm not even seeing me in there anymore. But yeah, how do you get? Okay. Cool. All right. All right, well, uh, Heidi, I'll tell you this. If you are still the only person at the end, I'll give you the third prize. Uh, so the second prize was going to be two, what was this? Hold on, I wrote it down. Second prize was going to be, uh, oh, five prints, five prints. Um, and that was at 7.30. So um, we'll just keep moving you up as long as people don't show up. Right now it's just on her. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thanks. I mean, uh, yeah, so since we're not doing the 7.30 prize drawing, I'll just say, um, Heidi, we'll give you five prints instead of the one as your prize. And then um, if still no one else is on by eight, then you get to get that prize. So we'll just, we'll just keep going. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to uh, drawings, drawings and paintings. So this is where... A lot of stuff. Let's start with um, Buzz. Can you hand me those two book things behind you? Yeah, yeah, those. And then that big book there. Thank you. you just throw it on the table. I'm gonna grab another quick drink of water. Okay. All right. So. Um, this is my book of prints. So this is where the prize prints will come from. It's kind of a mix, like this is all, a lot of my old work. Um, when I first went to school for illustration, no, actually it happened way after that. So after, after I dropped out of school the first time, I was going to U University of Texas at Arlington. Um, not long after I met my, my, the guy that I would marry and I had, we had two kids. Uh, and you know, life just happened and art kind of took a back seat for a while. Um, after they got a little bit older, I, I realized how much I missed art and I started doing a little bit more, uh, thinking I wanted to do kind of cartoony stuff. And I did a bunch of that and I did okay at that. Um, but after a while I realized it wasn't really where my heart was. And then I ended up going into special effects makeup and film, which was a blast. I loved the work. Uh, I loved sculpting and you know molding things. I still do. I, I still do a lot of that, and I don't do as much set work. It's just it's very stressful. Like you're you're being rushed to do things, and I'm not a fast artist. I will tell you that right away. I, I take my time. Um, so I dropped out of film after over a decade. I still do an occasional film gig, but not very much. I kind of real picky about which ones I'll take. Um, but I still make prosthetics. I've actually got a prosthetics workshop coming up. Um, uh, and, you know, I like making, I make tattoos for some people uh, and things like that. So anyway, um, so the, the old kind of, and then, oh, so after I got out of film, I went back to my old days of like just, or what I originally loved, which was doing portraits. And so um, really focused on doing portraiture. And decided I didn't, I was missing some things in my skill set. So I went back to school, got my degree, and then that's where I am now. So uh, I feel a lot more um, comfortable with with certain things now. Uh, AI is helping a lot too, honestly. It helps me to kind of imagine how, like, if I see a picture of somebody and the shadow's over here, but it needs to be over here, I can use some AI tools to help me with that. But just knowing bone structure now and knowing the underlying anatomy has helped a, a great deal. So it's really changed me as an artist, and I, I don't regret going to school for a day. I, I think it was, it was the best thing I could have done. So anyway, 
I still have all this old art sitting around from these old things that I did. So um, just a couple examples, like I've got this angel drawing I did. Um, I was really into fantasy stuff, so I've got a lot of like fairies. Uh, these are not on the website specifically. Um, there is a spot for buying uh, matted or loose prints. All the loose prints are $2, all the matted prints are $5. Um, of course, with the discount, you'll get 10% off with the coupon code. Um, uh, and, and there's just, that's, that's it, it's a link. And so if you want any of these, just contact me. Uh, you can send me an email uh, at Shelly Ray, uh, sorry, Shelly Denning1 at gmail.com. Uh, or, and there, I think I do have a, a caption for that. Um, Shelly Denning1 at gmail.com. Or if you know me on Facebook, just shoot me a message. If, so if you want to buy something, you can buy whatever you want. Okay. Oh, lean it forward. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. So I can I can probably find I've got image of these images of these somewhere, and I can I can share it with you if you want to buy any prints. You can. This these are kind of fun. These little Alice ones were really popular when I did them. Uh, they're kind of bloody and weird. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but if you want to see more, this is one I did of my ex-husband and my daughter. Um, I'd be happy to show those to you. But but for the prizes, I'll just be pulling some random ones out of here and sending those. So those are some of my prints. Uh, I do have a few uh, old originals. These are on the website. I'm probably not going to go through all of these, but um, there's like a little elf girl, uh, a little watercolor painting of no one in particular. Um, like a picture of a model. Is it still glary? Yeah. They're all on the website, so you know you can go. And Livia, if you're you're trying to keep up, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go through these real fast. Anyway, there's there's a bunch of just random things. There might be some. Some of these are a little more recent. Um, maybe this one. I've always loved this picture, and I can't believe no one's ever bought it. I don't know why I love it. I think it was fun. It says it will only hurt for a second. I call it Nurse Hurts. Um. Oh, this one actually is fairly recent. This is um watercolor I did of David Bowie. Um, that one was pretty fun. That one's not very old. Uh, oh, and here's one I did of, uh, is it Chris Cornell? Who was, is that who died? This guy? Um, yeah. So it's just a pencil drawing. Uh, uh, I do want to talk about these a little bit. Um, I've got another painting coming up in a little bit that was um, reminiscent of these. Again, going back to how I kind of like. Huh? Oh, we're on this camera? Oh, sorry. Here, is this where I need to be? Can you see it? Okay, cool. So these pictures were like, um, again, I like anatomy and I like very organic looks. And so these were just kind of doodles I was doing that, um, again, there's some, maybe some, uh, some, some, I don't know what's going on over here. It's some sort of, um, you know, some maybe some sexual connotations to them. You know, you don't really know what's going on, but there's things going in and out of things. There's things are wet, you know, so I don't know. I enjoyed doing them. I thought they were fun. I liked trying to make things look shiny. Um, and so later I ended up doing a painting kind of based off these doodles that I was doing, and you'll see those later. It's not something I typically do. It's very kind of different from my normal style, but um, I really like doing them. This one I call ear balls, you know, because why not uh okay um what else uh see in this too this was um kind of using that that same thing but doing it in a word like i just thought that was fun um this is whatever you think it is it's oil pastels um some other little doodles uh you know, playing around with markers just sitting around watching tv and doodling these uh were <laughs> paintings of the ceiling at school um we had to do um these were test uh, these were studies for some work that we were doing in school uh, just some real quick studies for a larger painting um these this uh model stole my credit card or my debit card um this was at dallas makerspace we hired a model and um while she was changing we were asked to leave the room and i left my purse in the room and left and I came back and we drew her and it was fine. And then a little bit later, like the next day, I think my, uh, I got hit with fraud on my card and had to get a new card. And that was the only time I had left my card. 
Unfortunately, we do have cameras in there, but because she was nude, they turned the cameras off, so I have no way of proving it, but pretty sure this girl stole some money from me, so. Anyway, I um, did one of Emma Watson from Harry Potter. This one's kind of fun. I was thinking about, you know, getting bad grades and made this piece on, um, and I'd never done anything on vellum, so this was just uh, paint markers on vellum, so you can kind of see through it, uh, and like, like some people, it's like, you get an F, and that is the end of your life, and so I made it all bloody, and I just, I don't know, it was kind of funny. Um, it's just a, a quick sketch in class that I kind of liked. Uh, this one is, I was doing, been doing some little hand lettering things too that I, that, you know, they're cheesy, but they're fun. This one has a lot of glitter on it. It says, today is your day. This one says, make waves. This one's actually a resin on a panel and then a marker over that. This one says, let your love be louder than their hate. And I don't know if that's a saying that people say or if I came up with that. Am I that smart? I don't know. But I, that stuck in my head one day and, um, and so I had this like rainbowy um, tree trunk kind of thing and just, I just wanted to write that. Um, empowered women, empower women. This, I can't claim the design. I did a workshop uh, where they taught us to make this, but, but I did the work, so. Um, this is one of my favorite sketches from one of my uh, life, not life drawing. This was actually during COVID. So we had to, we couldn't work from life because we couldn't be in class. So everything was done from photographs. But uh, we did, um, we're working on expressions. And I chose this photo. I just thought it, his expression was so fun. And I was really, really happy with the way this one came out. Um, and then same with this one. This is, you'll see a lot of her. I've done, a, this is Susie. She was one of our, uh, ongoing models and I've got a lot of lot of paintings and drawings of her but yeah that was that was a fun day um, this was uh, I did a little class at Azel Art Supply they, they were doing a um, class on drawing architecture with markers sadly Azel is closed down I'm actually wearing one of their shirts here um, but I did buy a bunch of stuff when they were going out of business so, um, and again, just little expressions. We like, these are very quick, just sketches, very fast. We like, what was this, does it say? No, I think we had to do them in like, like 30 seconds or something. So these were very, very quick sketches, but I thought they were, they were kind of fun. Um, these again, were during COVID. Uh, this is not my style. This was more my teacher's style, Brian Campbell. Uh, and I thought I would try to kind of emulate the way he paints. Um, where everything's, the paint's very thin. You can see the, the paper through it um, and everything's very kind of gestural and bold. And I actually was really happy with the way they came out. This is not the kind of thing I normally do, but I, I, I like them a lot. Um, this was from, uh, this is just another study from class. And this is a study for a larger piece that you'll see in a little bit. Um, these are, oh, I was artist of the month for Sketchbox one month and they asked me what kind of materials I use. I'm like, I don't know, whatever you want to send me. And they sent me oil pastels. And so we had to do something small. So I did this little fish. It was actually based on a photo I took when I was snorkeling one time. So a little blowfish. So that's those guys. Okay, let's move on to the bigger loose originals. Um, this is one of my absolute favorites. So in my senior senior drawing and painting senior studio class um we had to do we're pretty much able to do whatever we want and i wanted to do a series on the things that i'm obsessed with like over throughout my life i've had a lot of obsessions um when i was really little it was like unicorns and then as i got older um i was really into um batman most of you if you know me, you know that one. Uh, Batman, it went to like the monkeys, Peter Gabriel, like all kinds of things. I've been really, I've had my obsessions over the years. So I wanted to do paintings and drawings based on those obsessions. And I wanted them to each be a different, um, different medium. So they'll come up here in a little bit. But one of them was uh, Peter Gabriel. I'm actually going to see him in concert next week. I've never missed a show since 1995. Uh, but I did this one in colored pencil. Uh, you can see the larger picture online, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, and you can, I think you can zoom in, 
but um, yeah, I don't know how well you can see it here, but uh, this one took me a long time because colored pencil, especially if it's sharp, I mean, you can only fill in so much space at a time. My hand hurt from like trying to fill in all the background and, and everything, but I was really happy with the way it came out. Uh, I will say when I started doing it, I thought it was gonna, I thought it was gonna be awful. So I didn't really take care of it, and um, the paper got some creases in it. Uh, so I think I've got it at a little bit of a discount, but I was really still happy with the way that came out. Okay, I'm not gonna take everything out of here. Oh, this one I will. This was one of my other obsessions, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I was so I was all about it for a while there. Uh, so I did this watercolor painting of uh, Dr. Frankenfurter. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I just, I loved Rocky Horror so much. Uh, so I was pretty happy with the way that came out as well. It was a lot of fun. All these little, these little bitty details were just a blast to do. I had a great time with that one. Oh, also as far as um, prints of some of my newer work, those are the only two I've got on the website right now that you can get canvas prints from. If there's something you see that you want to print of and I don't have it available, just let me know. Send me an email, Shelly Ray or Shelly Dunning one at gmail.com and we can work that out. Uh, I'm probably just going to hold this up and do some of these other ones I don't know. and then take everything out. So um, this was just a sketch from a life drawing uh, session in class. This one was based on a photograph I took when I was working at Absinthe Lounge years ago of the light glowing through a cup. I just thought it was cool. Um, this one is based on the um, movie from The Lost Boys. So it was Kiefer Sutherland's character in The Lost Boys. This is that same model that stole my debit card. Uh, this is a piece of plastic, actually, a mirrored plastic that I poured some alcohol inks onto and burned them and then did some uh, lines over it with paint pens just for fun. Um, nothing new. This one, again, was just kind of playing around with paint pens and doing some abstract weird stuff. Doesn't really mean anything. This was a, um, this was a life drawing session in school, one of my first ones. This might have been the first one, actually. Uh, so that was fun. Um, another life drawing session from school. Another life drawing session from school. That's Susie again. You'll see her many times. Um, this was another life drawing session from school. Susie again. This is, I don't do chalk pastels very often, but that's what this was. I was, I was pretty happy with the way that came out. This one was based on doing like a master copy, but changing it up. So I did uh, several things based on um, Leonardo da Vinci's work. Um, let's see what's in here. Another one of Susie. This was, uh, I don't remember where I did this, some life drawing session I signed up for. Um, just some quick sketches. I just kind of liked how messy the page was. Uh, this was another one, another life drawing session in school. We did feet and hands one day. Another life drawing. Uh, there's some more feet and hands. Again, these are just sketches, but I just, I kind of liked them. Just a lot of life drawing stuff. Um, this one is a study for a larger painting that you'll see in a little bit. This was the um, a sketch for a self-portrait that I will pull up in a minute too. Another one, another sketch for another picture. Oh, this was one of the first things we drew is a stupid egg. If anybody wants this egg, I'll give it to you cheap. Uh, this is another sketch. I think that's all that's in here. Okay, so that's it for that book. Okay, now we'll go on to actual, the big work. Okay, what time is it? Almost time for maybe another drawing, if, if we're doing it. Sorry, some of that stuff leaves marks all over me. Okay, um, I guess we'll start with this one. Actually, you know what, while it's here, why don't we start with this big guy? So I'm about to show you the only painting that's ever made me cry. We had to do a four by three foot um, self-portrait. And a lot of people did, oh, I'm pretty pretty. I'm not like that, I wanted to make a weird face. So I took a bunch of weird pictures of myself and picked one. Um, 
and we had very limited time to do it. I think I was taking five studio classes at a time, which is almost unheard of. Uh, each class is, you're in class three hours, two times a week, but then you're expected to work at least that much outside of that class. So it was just, it was a lot. And the night before this painting was due, there were, we had a full studio of students past midnight trying to get this thing done. And I was just, I was so frustrated with it. I'm like, I'm never gonna finish in time. It's awful, I hate it. And then of course at the end, I kind of, it all started coming together. And, uh, and now it's one of my favorite pieces. And if nobody buys this ever, like I'm gonna give it a little bit longer, I'm gonna give it to my dad. But I would love it if somebody would want to have my face on their wall. This was in our bedroom for a while and I, I was like, I, I'm sorry, tired of looking at my own face. So anyway, I don't know, can you see that? Is that the right spot? Um, so yeah, it was actually a lot of fun to do. I had, you can kind of tell, I did most of my work up in here and I got down here and this is where I was rushing. But I think it came together, I kind of like how this is a little less detailed than the eye because it draws your attention to the eye. Um, and yeah, it's, it's giant. And I actually, I think I, sh yeah, I made and stretched, I, I made the canvas frame myself and stretched the canvas myself. So this is, every bit of this has my, my soul in it. So if anyone wants my face, you can have it. Let me move this back. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see what's in the box. Uh, so one thing I went to school for originally because I'm, I'm very, um, I'm a realism drawer, painter. Uh, I like detail, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. I like detail, I like making things look super realistic. And, but I love the look of um, really gestural, impressionistic work and I just didn't know how to do that. Like my brain could not comprehend how you can make something with so few marks and it looks like something real. Um, and that's a big reason why I went back to school and I think by the end I finally started kind of getting it and it felt so good. Uh, this was one of the first pieces where I actually started doing that and I just, like it was like when I stood back I was like, I did that, I did that. And I was so proud of myself and, and just couldn't believe it. So um, this was another one we did during COVID. So, excuse me, so it wasn't a live model, unfortunately, it was done from a photograph. But uh, yeah, I, I stood back from the canvas and used a long handled brush so that I couldn't get up close and do detail. Uh, and I mean, I did some, but mostly it was all very far away. And that, I mean, it just taught me so much. And I just loved like, I would never have thought to put this big glow of like orange or this rust color on the bottom of his chin, but it just worked. And I, so I'm really, really happy with this piece. Um, I'd love to see him go to a good home. But yeah, that was, that was the beginning of a whole new thing for me. Um, let's see. This is, oh no, it's broken. I'm not gonna show that. Okay. <laughs> This one was one I did outside of school just for fun. Uh, I was at the Dallas Aquarium one time and saw this cute little caiman lizard and took a picture of him and just all the colors were gorgeous. And so I did this one in colored pencil. Um, this one is more typical of what I do. It's a very, very detailed. Uh, it took me a very long time to do. If you look on the website, I've actually got some videos, some time-lapse videos of me working on this piece. Um, but. This one, I just, I love this piece called Lizzie. I think he's cute. He, she, I, I don't know. Um, all right, so one thing we had to do in school was self-portraits. Oh my God, so many self-portraits. I got so sick of looking at my own face. Um, so the first one we had to do, which is more of a homework assignment, it wasn't like in class. So I grabbed an old picture of myself and I was like, I'm just gonna do it in pencil. Like that was my first love. When I was a kid, you know, you've always got a pencil, it's easy. So. I just grabbed a pencil and just went to town. So I did uh, this one of myself. Um, I remember I was running karaoke at a bar and my friend was there and she wrote, grabbed a pen and wrote on my arm, badass chick. And I was like, okay. So I just, I thought it was fun. And yeah, I hadn't done pencil in so long because in school you mostly expect to do paint and uh, it felt good to get back to that. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really happy with the way that one came out. 
Um, let's see, here's another giant one of Susie. So yeah, there's that. I don't know where to put these. This is gonna get weird real quick. Okay. I'll just stack them. I only have a couple of this giant. Your mom wants the badass chick. Oh. It's and on... I'm just gonna say there's a consensus in the chat room right now where you know mom needs to win. Oh well well that one's one that's here, not a so... prize. That's not a prize. <laughs> You're welcome to go buy it. <laughs> It's in the it's on the website. Use the art show twenty. What is it? What is it online? I don't remember the online art show. What, what's the code? Oh, I've got it written down right here. Art show ten twenty three for ten percent off. Uh, okay, um, this is one I did all in ink. Different kinds of ink. No, there's a little bit of, of chalk in there, but different kinds of ink. Some was pen. Some was like brushed on. It was just kind of an experimental thing uh, with ink. Oh, here's the one you saw study for this one earlier. This is, I call it bony touch. Uh, it was on a clipped on an artboard, so you got these little gaps here, but I think that gives it a lot of like realism, like, like it was done by hand. So this was kind of a fun one I did of Susie. I really liked, I liked the, the way the skin looked, you know, everything was very curved and rounded and just beautiful. Um, I actually moved him. This isn't quite where he was, but I cheated it a little bit to make it look more interesting. Um, this is another one I did in school with um, chalk pastels, which again was not something I was used to using, but I loved the way the light was glowing in from this side and, and you get these little hints of this or these orangey colors. It was really pretty. Um, I don't remember if this was actually this color, if I just did that for fun. But um, yeah, that was a fun, fun one. Uh, these three are some I did at home. I just wanted to play with some new markers that I had. They were big markers, so I thought I'd do these weird... I just wanted to do something artistic, and I didn't have time to do, like, a big detailed art piece, so I just kind of was playing. This was just me playing. Um, just, I don't know what they mean. I was just having fun. Sometimes you have to do that, you know. Um, this is... An oil, I think this is oil. This is one of the first things I did in one of my painting classes. We had melon, I call it nice melons. Um, yeah. We did a lot of little still life things, so I didn't have a lot of control over what was happening. They don't, again, they don't really mean anything. They're just, you know, they're just art. They're just little paintings. Uh, this was me in some of my first art classes and getting back into the swing of painting. Uh, you know, again, just some fruit in a bottle, and you know, I'd never done this kind of refractory kind of look, and that was that was really fun to do. Um, we had a fun experiment where we had to take some sort of photo, and I had one of a bunch of components. I don't know what they were components of, but Patrick was wearing a glove and had all these little bits of things, and uh, so we did two paintings of it. One was where we built the layers very, very slowly with thin, thin layers of paint, and then we did the same painting but had to go direct with the thick paint. What are you laughing at? Just the comments. Oh, are they good ones? Mom, mom better win. Oh I'll my goodness. Like, mom needs to win something here. Mom, I'll just give you something. <laughs> what do you want? She wants to be the winner <laughs> of a drawing. All right, well, we'll do another one in a few more minutes. Oh, it's probably time, isn't it? Yeah, it's let me 803. 803. Okay, let me finish this bin, and then we'll, we'll do it. We'll do something. Okay, so this is one where we layered the thin, thin layers of paint over and over, and then... This is the one where I just went direct. I think I prefer the direct. I think for me, that feels, it feels better to do. And I like the look of it better. But, you know, everyone has their own ideas of what, what's good and what's art. So, anyway, I think they're both cool, though. Uh, this one was one I just did for fun. It was of my, a photo of my daughter and her friend swimming. No, nothing, nothing spectacular, just fun. Okay, this is getting back to my obsession ones, and this is one of my absolute favorite pieces in that I've ever done out of everything. Uh, so I talked about my obsession with Batman, and I did this one in oil, and I just love it so much. I love it so much, and I hope somebody else out there loves Batman, and Michael Keaton, like the only Batman, really, let's be honest. Um, I hope somebody else loves Batman as much as I do and wants to take him home. So please, somebody buy Batman. But I do have um, 
uh, canvas prints available of this in my shop as well. Uh, let's see, this is one is from school. This was, uh, we had to do a black and white painting or grisai if you're an artist and in art and know what that means. Um, and I had a, the sketch of this one as well somewhere. <clears throat> that one's good. Oh, another self portrait. Oh my gosh, this one was a self portrait from life. So I had to have a mirror in front of me and paint as I'm looking. And you know how hard that is to paint and then get back in the exact same position you were just in? It was rough, but um, I got this one done. And this is when my hair was all kinds of different colors and shaved on the sides. I love the way my, um, sorry, this one, thank you. I love the way my apron came out. I think the apron looks really good. And you can even see like in the background, there's the picture of my son's uh, graduation photo is back there in our lava lamp. You might even be able to see in, in the shot. I'm not sure. It's still there. Anyway, so that was... That was fun, but again, I'm so tired of looking at my own face. Um, let's see, these guys, these little guys were just, uh, these were all really, really quick paintings we had to do. Um, of a bunch of still life stuff that was set out. I think this was my favorite from the group. So everybody just brought stuff. Like everybody in the class just brought things. So there were just random things thrown on this table. And this one, I thought it was fun because it was like a game controller and a wine, a bottle opener and some darts and um, I called it time wasters because it kind of is, but I, I thought it was kind of fun. Again, not my style, but we were had to do it so fast. I had to do everything I could just to get the, the basic, like the gist of it down in as fast as I could. So that was kind of fun. And I kind of like these little pearls. And then I did several, um, D20s or 20-sided dice. I've got a couple more. So I did that. I think I maybe just have two. So that one and this one. And they were kind of clear. You could see through them a little bit. So I was trying to get that, <coughs> that translucency to them, but that was a challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I also liked playing with the textures uh, on the on this board. Just this was really it was just a time to experiment. So really these were just that's all these were. But <coughs> excuse me. So then we had a little skull thing. So I just was doing different skulls again, just playing with color and texture. So that one, we've got this one. Um, this one I just put my hand in the paint and put it on there. Also I scraped all the extra dried up paint off of my palette and just stuck it to the to the board just to give it some more texture. And not to waste paint, you know. This is another one with like pearls and bubbles and things. Uh, and then some darts. You got a game room. Do a little dart painting. Okay, so that bin is done. Let's move on. I think we're almost done, y'all. Oh, we need to do, how many people do we have in the chat? Or not in the chat, but just tuned in. Uh, right now we have, there's only one person that's important in the chat room right now. Oh. <laughs> that is mama. <laughs> okay. I'm going to spin the wheel. Is it? Oh my gosh, fine. Spin the, is, is that? I'm just, I'm just repeating what everybody else is saying. Oh, really? Well, is there anybody else in there? Uh, Heidi. Just Heidi and my mom. And myself. And you. Okay, and us. Okay. Well then, let's. All right. Mama, you won an original. Oh, an original. You just won up. an original. One of my old originals, though, not one of the new ones. You get one of the old ones, and I'll let you pick which one. You feel better? Okay, let me write that down. Old, original. Wait till you read the chat. Oh my God, I can't wait. So we'll, we'll, we'll chat later and you can pick which one you want. So the final prize is still yet to be won and it's a trivia question, so I hope y'all have been paying attention. Okay, we're gonna just put these away and we'll move on to the last bin, y'all. We are almost done, I can't believe I thought it was gonna take, I didn't think I was gonna be able to get to everything, but we have gotten through so much. Okay, can you help me? I, my cord isn't very long. Can you send me that other, the other bin? I don't know if I can, oh wait, I can make it. I can make it, I got it, I got it. No, I got it, this is all. Okay, um, <clears throat> oh, so here, let's see, where's the other one? There we go. So we had, a, a, had to do a complex lighting painting um, and this is this again was after covid so uh, it was light shining 
like weird lights shining. I don't know what they did. They just, they got all the uh, models in the studio and did different things. And, and I liked this, this one a lot. So you saw a little study of it earlier. Um, this was the final, and this is a small study of the same painting. And it was just cool the way the lights went over and like curve around the body and how it like, you know, they disappear as the body curves around to the wall. Um, oh, it was just, it was a fun, this was a challenging painting. This is another one where I was really trying to be more, uh, more gestural and impressionistic with it as opposed to focusing on fine details. So this was really outside of my comfort zone. And like, this is a tattoo and I feel like it, maybe it doesn't register real well, but you know what, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think I like the way the lights came out. Um, and I, I, all in all, it's, it's, it's a decent piece. I'm happy with, I'm happy with it. I think I like the little one better actually, but uh, hopefully somebody will, will like uh, Zionte here and want to take him home. Let's see. And then, uh, so in one class we had, we had to do something experimental this was, well, it was my experimental painting class. Uh, and I was like, I don't know what I want to do. So I think this, this might have also been after COVID. So I just had to find something at home. So I took, um, this is, oh, the story of this canvas is actually really fun. Uh, we have two chairs. They were like canvas chairs. And we had some friends over for Christmas. And one of my friends sat in one of the chairs and it broke. Uh, they were they were older, you know, so it it broke, and I was like, well, it, I mean, it, like the wood broke right in the middle, so it's really not an easy way to fix it. I was like, let's let's scavenge all the uh, hardware from it, and then I took the canvas. I'm like, wait a minute, this is like canvas. Like I can, I really can't wait to hear what's going on in this chat because Buzz is over here cracking up. Well, um, mom wants the model. She, she wants the you want Zayante? Not the picture. Oh, you want the model. <laughs> That's the way I'm thinking anyway. <laughs> I don't have his contact information, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, the, I har harvested the canvas from this, this chair. I'm like, I could paint on that. You can paint on anything, right? So I actually, I built this frame and I wrapped the canvas around it. And um, yeah, so that became this painting. So I um, coated it in really thick, paint, white paint, and then um, I I guess I did I did this like circle of color spattered and like moving around and it wasn't enough. I felt like it just wasn't enough. So I dug a trench into the, um, no, you know what I did? I put a ring, no, not I remember. I put a ring of metal down on it and then I painted over that. And then when I pulled the ring up, I had this trench and I poured resin into it. Uh, because resin will, uh, and it, was it resin? It might have been, I don't remember what it was. Anyway, it was something. It was, I think it was some sort of medium. I don't remember which one. Anyway, I poured that in there because I knew that it was a kind of material that will yellow over time, and I wanted to just kind of see. I figure it's cool to have a piece of art that will change and is meant to change over time. So, uh, and it has. It's gotten much yellower over time. Uh, so I don't know. It was just a fun, again, kind of outside of the box thing for me because I don't do a lot of abstract work. Uh, so, so there's that. That was fun. This one, I honestly, oh, this was another one. Oh, no, it wasn't made from that same chair, but I did make this uh, stretcher in this canvas. Um, I don't remember what the, what the gist was of this assignment, but I just had this picture that I had taken of this cool stone wall and this door, and I just thought it was really pretty. Um, <clears throat> so I did that, and I did it, and it felt like it didn't have enough pop. So I went and outlined everything to make it almost kind of cartoony, to make it seem almost like fake, um, just just to make it more graphic and stuff. And I, I kind of kind of enjoy how that ended up. Uh, this is another one of our uh, still life studies in class. This one we spent a little bit of time on. I, I hated these stupid lemon flower thing. I don't know what they are, but they're like lemons, but on stalks, like on stems. I don't know what they are. I thought they were ridiculous, but I went ahead and did them. And then this croc was the most fun thing to paint I think I've ever painted. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I call this piece what a croc, because what a croc, dude, I love it. Um, yeah, this was a fun one to do. 
another still life, which you won't see me doing much. So if you want one of my still lives, better grab them now because I probably won't be doing many more of those in the future. Um, this is another one. We did another Grisai still life. This was fun because everything was like metallic and shiny and we had all these cool uh, reflections happening. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing this one a lot and I kind of like the look of it. Like there's so much going on and it's all so similar that you just don't know where to settle. Like your eye just continues to move around the whole piece and I think it's, I think it's really fun. So This one, I think I fought for my position in the class because I was like, this is the angle I want of this piece. And I'm like, I'm living here. Uh, yeah, so that, was, that was fun to do. <clears throat> okay, this one we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, so those little weird organic sketches, uh, this is the piece that I ended up doing off of that. So this again was during COVID and the theme was home. And so for me, it's like home is where I can take my bra off and be comfortable. Uh, home is, um, you know, and it is very sexual. Well, that's, well, that's where I am when I do that kind of thing. I'm at home, you know. And this for me, oh, and also it's made to look kind of like a lock. Um, like, like, you know, like a padlock in a way. Um, I don't remember why exactly, but you know, and then the eyes, I, I don't know. I just liked, and there's like a butt. This symbolizes my boyfriend's butt because I think I like his butt. Um, so, you know, it's just all these things going on and it kind of helps to mirror this here and give it uh, balance. Uh, this is meant to represent a screen because at that time during COVID, we all uh, operated through a screen. That's how we communicated with each other. So it was like, so for me, that was home at that point. My home is in a screen. So anyway, I loved doing this one. I loved the doing these soft gradients um, and like adding these little shines and stuff. I just, I don't know what it was about it, but it feels, it just feels good to me. And I would love to do more work kind of like this. So, um, Oh, I've got to say a little aside. So on this big portrait of me, <laughs> I put my name, Shelly, I signed it real big. And one of my teachers came up and he's like, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. I'm like, what? Don't, don't sign my work. He's like, yeah, don't do that. I'm like, since when? Like artists have been signing their work for, for, you know, centuries. He's like, yeah, not these days. You can sign it on the back, but don't sign it. I'm like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So I make sure to sign every single piece just for you, Jim, just for you. I sign it. I even want to do it. What I really want to do is just one big painting of my signature and then I'll send it to him. So anyway. Uh, okay. One more painting of Susie. This one was, uh, uh, this one we had, we had a little more time to work on. So you can tell it's a lot more detailed than most of them. Um, this again was done at home from a photograph because of COVID. Uh, but I was really, really happy with the way this came out. I think the skin tones are really nice and even, and her eyes just glow. And Susie, I have, I have drawn and painted her so many times that I never could quite get her likeness right. And this is, I think, the closest that I got, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that one. I think it just looks really warm and pretty. Um, okay, so we have one painting left, and we're done. So um, this was another one. This was done during the ice apocalypse. That, if you're in Texas, I'm sure you remember all too uh, not so fondly. Um, so we, of course, couldn't go to school. We we're stuck at home, and I had this project, and I already planned the project out. And um, I don't remember. I think this was another kind of. Oh, I know. It was an experimental drawing class, and we had to paint with something other than paint. And I was like, well, what do I use? I don't want to use food because, like, that's gross. I mean, I was like, what do I have? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a makeup artist. I have makeup. I have so much makeup. And makeup, a lot of it that's gone bad and I can't really use on anyone's face. Um, but I could use it on a canvas. So I decided to take all this old makeup and I just started pouring it on the canvas. Well, actually, it was, it was a panel pouring it on the panel and lining it up and, and layering and layering until I got what I wanted. Um, since I was using makeup, I wanted it to be some sort of message about beauty standards um, and how we, we think by covering our faces in, in makeup, that's what makes us beautiful. And I thought about it from the basis of being a woman 
And then I was like, well, what would make, what would give this a twist? And I went back to my old friend, uh, Logan, who I had made the little uh, uh, hinge pendant of, and said, hey, I think you would be the perfect subject for this project. And we talked to Sarah, uh, who let us use one of her photos as well. So I did the portrait based on him, uh, and I blocked out the eyes and the mouth because I wanted to only show what the makeup shows. So the real parts were disappearing and all you get to see is what's fake. Uh, and I call this piece um, The Perfect Woman because based on beauty standards, the perfect woman has to wear all this makeup and has to be perfect and beautiful. Uh, but in that twist is because it's a man, uh, the perfect woman doesn't exist. So um, it's very heavy. It's layered with lots of resin. It's probably gonna be very shiny. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. And are these in the way? Probably. So yeah, there are several layers of resin here. Um, I was really hoping that once I set it up, that the makeup, because a lot of it was liquid and oil-based, I was hoping it would continue to slide and move behind the resin. Unfortunately, it hasn't. It's kind of stayed put, so it is what it is. But yeah, there's probably a, a several hundred dollars worth of makeup in here. And then I made the frame, um, I built the frame and it's coated in a lot of glitter because I wanted it to just be like super sparkly and fantastic and everything I could to make it pretty. And then I dropped it and cracked the side and I was going to fix it, but then I thought, no, I'm going to leave it because it's kind of that little hidden damage, that hidden bit of not so beautiful uh, that we all try to hide. And uh, let's let it show, which is kind of what I'm doing with my busted face right now. So. So I think that's it. So that's everything that I have currently for sale. I have a lot of other art that has already sold. I'm not showing that right now. We're trying to just get some things moving. Um, what time is it? Oh, we are right on time, dude. Perfect. So let's see. I did that. I did that. Mm -hmm. All right. So the grand prize, the grand prize. How many people do we have in, online? Just we the two? Two, okay. The grand prize is an eight by 10 custom portrait, uh, either in watercolor or in um, graphite and charcoal. Your choice. Has, oh, it's a single, <laughs> it's a single subject. So not like, I don't, I'm not gonna paint all your grandkids. You pick one person, I'll do a painting or drawing of that person. Unless you wanna pay more, you can. Uh, so this is not a prize wheel. This one is a trivia question. So hopefully you were tuning, you were paying attention and hopefully you remember what I said earlier. The first one to answer correctly in the chat will be the winner. And, and you can win even if you've already won something else. So here's the question, get ready. How much money do you have to spend in my, uh, on the website in order to get a free print? I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'll give you a second. 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna just we're just gonna be patient. Let's see who answers. This way. So so I yeah, so I mentioned earlier you can buy you can for every so much money you spend, you get a free print. What's that dollar amount? Guess if you weren't there, if you weren't listening, or you didn't didn't hadn't tuned in yet, just guess. First one to get it right. You remember what it is, Buzz, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, first one to get it right gets that free custom painting or drawing. Oh, wait. <laughs> Heidi, guess, mom's, mama mom's guess. $25. Okay, well that's wrong. She put a question mark. Oh, yep, it's wrong. Keep guessing. Keep guessing. Olivia guessed forty-five dollars with a question mark. That's wrong. Not right. Olivia, you can't get. You can't win. You're part of this thing. Mom said one hundred dollars. Nope, not yet. The 
delay makes it a little. Worse. I know it's like because oh, they gotta wait for the comment to wait. come back, and then yeah, and then they don't hear me say yes or no <clears> until <throat> it's later. Yeah. Well, y'all keep guessing, and oh, well, they remember the code though. They remember the, the code. Percent discounts. <laughs> <laughs> Something. So I guess while we're waiting for somebody to win, and just just interrupt me if somebody puts in the right answer, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in uh, or for watching this later on. Sorry you couldn't be part of the prizes if you're tuning in later on, but uh, hopefully you learned some things about me well, and about my art. I didn't come in to now participating, so we got three people in here going for it. Oh, did they did they know the question now? Higher or lower? Okay, yeah, it looks like it, but they weren't participants. Okay, so the question is, how much money do you have to spend in my shop to get a free print? So for every... Heidi got 50 to get one. What's that? Heidi got it. 50 Heidi? to get one is what she got. Heidi got it. $50 to get one free print. That is absolutely correct, Heidi. You are the winner. Awesome. I will be in touch with you about uh, your, your free art. Congratulations. And again, thank you to everybody who tuned in or is watching again on the re... What do you call it? Not rebroadcast, but repost. Rebroadcast. Whatever. Rerun. Sure. <laughs> Whoever's watching later, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, again, my um, my num my my email is shellydenning1 at gmail.com. Uh, if you enjoyed this, if you're an artist and you want to have your own online art show, uh, I would love to bring my whole setup, my cameras, my camera switchers, uh, my lights and everything, and I'll bring them and do a show for you. Get in touch with me and uh, we'll talk about what you want to do and we'll, I'll get you a quote. Uh, for that, you can email me at shelly at shellysartspace.com. So Shelly at ShellysArtspace.com. Again, if you go to ShellysArtspace.com, you can sign up for my mailing list and you'll be notified about everything Shelly's Art Space is doing uh, and all the things that we've got planned. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up for artists and for um, non-artists as well. But Shelly's Art Space, my tagline is where everyone's an artist. So if you like to make stuff, join me and we'll make some cool stuff. Um, yeah, so I will be posting this again on YouTube. Uh, very soon, I will might do some little minor edits, and then we'll throw it up there, and I'll let y'all know when it's available. Uh, any last questions or comments? Um, let's see. We've got about three minutes left here. If anyone has anything they want to ask me or tell me or request. I just, I just asked that in the chat. So okay. Just one second. Okay. If you want me to do a little dance, don't, don't make me dance. Tell a dad joke. Tell a dad joke. While we wait. How do you how do you make a tissue dance? Anybody? No? You blow a little boogie into it. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you next time.